I really think this uh, course is really a great uh, opportunity to meet people. Uh, as a matter of fact, they are uh, students from 13 countries and uh, instructors from five countries. So a lot of discussions are happening during the sessions, but also later uh, and also during the practicals. Um, and also we have people that are uh, students at university or uh, PhD or postdocs uh, and also we have people in governments, uh, regulators uh, and also people in the industry so it's a very good mix and uh, for me it has been a pleasure to be in, in the Canary Island. So uh, Integrated Multitrophic Aquaculture or in brief uh, IMTA it looks like a complex uh, uh, concept, but as a matter of fact, it's nothing less than uh, mimicking what the nature is doing. So we have what we call fed aquaculture, that's the fish that you feed, uh, and because they don't eat uh, all the food and also they excrete, you need what is called extractive aquaculture. Uh, so that's a uh, uh, species that will recover the nutrients. And as a matter of fact, we need different uh, species at different trophic levels. So the seaweed will recover the dissolved nutrients, dissolved nitrogen, dissolved phosphorus. Uh, we need some organisms that will recover the small organic particle, so that will be uh, mussels and oysters, and we need also some organisms that need to recover the larger organic particule at the bottom, and for that we need things like sea urchins, sea cucumber, sea worms. So we are combining these different species that act at different uh, levels, trophic levels, to try to have some providing nutrients and some recovering nutrients. And of course, if you want that to work, we need to have species that have commercial value because what we want to do is to uh, show, to demonstrate to the uh, aquaculture industry that the aquaculture practices can evolve and still be profitable. So we need to have uh, extractive species that have also uh, commercial uh, value. So at the present time, uh, IMTA, I think if uh, IMTA in uh, Asia is, is not uh, that complicated to explain because Asian people have been used to uh, do this activity together for centuries and also they eat a lot of seaweeds, uh, they also eat a lot of invertebrates. Uh, on top of the fish. In the Western world, it's a little more complicated because we have to convince people that they can grow several species together. Uh, we have to convince people they can eat seaweed, they can eat invertebrates. Uh, so uh, more work in the Western world. But I think what is really important if we want IMTA to really develop and expand, uh, two things. Uh, we. Uh, we have to make the economic demonstration. I think we have done a lot of work at the level of the biology and we demonstrated that biologically it's a good uh, concept, but we need to show that economically it works. Uh, but for that, we have to reach a certain scale. And the second uh, limitation in the Western world are regulations. So uh, if we want to be able to expand at a scale where we can demonstrate the economic value of uh, IMTA, we need regulations that allow us to reach this scale. And at the present time, in many countries, um, being in North America or being in Europe, we don't have regulation with IMTA in mind because regulation, like in fisheries, aquaculture, it's mon mostly a monoculture approach on what we want is several species together. So economic demonstration, regulations, uh, change of attitude, uh, IMTA is all about what some people also call a circular economy. So we have to enter into this understanding of what circular economies is, uh, biorefinery, uh, and all the, these concepts that are also very close to, to, to IMTA. So that, that would be the main things, uh, and then regulation to be able to scale up and make the true demonstration. Also, what is very important is uh, 
to realize that the extractive spaces are also providing what is called ecosystem services. And so the seaweeds, but by recovering the dissolved nutrients, the different invertebrates by recovering the small particle, organic particle on the large organic particle, are providing services to the ecosystem. And at the present time, I would say it's almost free of charge. But as a matter of fact, the value of these ecosystems reach in the millions, and we should put them in the equation. Uh, so people talk about carbon tax. I think uh, it's better, I much prefer to talk about credits than tax. And in the coastal environment, it's not only a story of carbon, it's also a story of nitrogen and phosphorus. So it's about time we talk about nutrient trading uh, credits.